Hey everybody, Deathblade here. I'm in my living room again. Sorry for the white background. I'll get some kind of background eventually. Uh, there is something secret about this video. I'm not going to say what it is. Madam Deathblade helped me with something. If you can guess what it is after looking at the video, leave your guess in the comments below. I will confirm anybody who guesses it, but I'm not going to reveal the information uh, of my own initiative. Somebody has to guess it. Okay, so today I'm talking about Yin Yang China, which is the ups and downs of living in China from the perspective of a foreigner, an outsider. And today I'm talking about Chinese food. Now, Chinese food is a massive, massive subject that, you know, you can read books about, you can watch TV shows about, uh, go on YouTube, you can find all kinds of people going around uh, trying all kinds of regional Chinese foods. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to talk about the good side about it and then the bad side. Because normally I talk about the bad side of stuff and then the good side. This time I'm going to kind of switch it up a bit. For the good side of Chinese food, I don't think I really need to get uh, into too much detail. Chinese food is amazing. There is a huge variety of Chinese food. Um, when you're living in China, a lot of times you can get really inexpensive but delicious foods. Uh, pretty much anything that you like, whether it's sweet or spicy or salty, <clears throat> Uh, you can find it and it's just amazing and um, before I get into the negative aspect I'm gonna say that I absolutely love Chinese food and uh, last time I went to America to visit for a little bit um, I was missing it already the first couple of days of the trip um, back to America so definitely Chinese food is amazing and uh, you can't deny that so what's the negative side of Chinese food well there's actually a couple main ones that I'm gonna get into uh, first of all is that it can get old <laughs> very okay it doesn't happen very quickly and let me clarify there's a massive amount of different types of chinese foods different regional foods like i mentioned before um, but let's imagine that you're coming to china to live and you're working and you're not just like a world traveler that's going around trying all kinds of different foods if you live in one place in china and you have a job that requires you to have a relatively normal schedule it can start to get old now for me it took many years i would say it took five or six years here straight before I started to get sick of the food. Now, again, earlier I mentioned I love it, and that's true. But I'm the kind of person who just, when it comes to food in general, I don't really like to have the same stuff over and over again. There are a few those few things that are like your comfort foods that you love to eat, like no matter what. Um, and I have those. But most of the time, I don't want to have stuff more than, you know, maybe like once a week. And then there's those certain things that are like, okay, I can handle that once a month. Uh, but the sad thing is that when you're living in one place and you don't have a chance to travel around a lot, there actually isn't that huge of a variety of food. Now, of course, of course there's caveats to everything that I'm saying. For example, um, even in one city in one small location, there are, there is a lot of variety. But a lot of times the really good, like awesome stuff tends to be at really expensive restaurants. But yeah, after you live in uh, one place in China for a really long time, you start finding out that when it comes to day-to-day -day life, you know, what to get for breakfast, what to get for lunch, it tends to be a very limited kind of uh, assortment of food that that can get tiring after a while. And then that's not to mention that depending on where you live in China, the, the food from your home country, whether, whether you come from the West or somewhere else, uh, chances are you're not going to be able to get it very easily. Now, there are a few places in China, for example, in Beijing, Shanghai, and some of the other top cities where there are very large expat communities and you're going to be able to find restaurants and imported uh, ingredients a lot easier. But outside of those, uh, those big um, expat areas, most of the rest of China, it's not like that. Uh, I live in a, what's a, a tier two city. So it's basically, um, it's advanced. We have like a subway system. We have an IMAX theater. We have... Uh, Starbucks and KFC and like all kinds of stuff. But the in terms of the foreign food, it's there's not much to be had. Uh, there's a lot of um, Chinese style Japanese food, sushi. There's a lot of Korean food because Korea is close. But other than, oh, and then there is Western food. But Western food basically is like, um, it's like imagine a Denny's or like a, a IHOP or something like that, except like the worst quality, like not to like makes you sick, but just like not really that good. That's basically the kind of food that you can get. It's Chineseified. It's not really that authentic. Burgers and pizza and like random stuff like that. It's, it's a lot harder to get authentic food at restaurants. And then when it comes to acquiring the ingredients, going to the store, it's more and more common to be able to find that kind of stuff. Like when I first came to the city that I live in, 
you had to go to one specific supermarket or two that had an import section to be able to get just about anything. Nowadays, you can go literally to the corner store in this random neighborhood that I live in, and they have spaghetti sauce and spaghetti noodles on the shelf at the basically like the 7-Eleven of this city. That having been said, uh, ingredients other than the very standard stuff, the the more difficult to find things are either not present at all or you have to get them online. And then there are certain things that you just are almost impossible to get online. Like for example, fresh mozzarella cheese, definitely impossible to get online. And there are other things that I like, I've, I've tried to get chipotle peppers. It's, you can sometimes find them, but then they're really expensive to get shipped. So anyway, that's one of the downsides. Now there's a, a second major downside to the food in China that I want to get into. And that is the, the health factor. There's this myth in, especially in the Western world, at least that I, I remember that Chinese food is so healthy. Like look at all the Chinese people. There's, they're not overweight and so good for you. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe that's the case, like generally speaking, but there's, there's two factors that play into why it's can be unhealthy. One of them has to do with the fact that there is very little, if Maybe, maybe you could even say almost no standard of cleanliness in China. Now, all the restaurants will have signs that are, like, are supposedly from like health inspection and stuff. But trust me, there is nobody really actually going around and policing that kind of thing. And uh, it's all it, Chinese stuff all has to do with relationships. And so guarantee you that those inspections that are happening by food commission, food inspections and stuff are not really legit. I shudder to think of what happens even in some of the nice restaurants because it just in terms of general standards of cleanliness, um, there's just a huge gap between most of the Western world and China. Uh, and that's not to mention when you get into things like street food, because um, when you get in, when you're dealing with street food, you have just the general lack of cleanliness, you know, people that are out there for hours at a time without any access to, to like places to wash their hands. They're not really washing the dishes that they're serving with a lot of times, most of the time, what they'll do is they'll wrap the bowl in like a plastic um, bag of some sort to serve it to you. Um, but you know, sometimes those people handle the money, then handle the food. It's really hard to say you can pay, pay attention when you're out to get street food to kind of watch for that, to, to try to pick and choose between what's a good, what might, what might be clean and what might not, but you're kind of rolling the dice as to whether you're going to have uh, problems with it later. And then that's not even to mention the fact that there's a huge problem with, uh, well, for for example, there's a thing called gutter oil, which if you haven't heard about it, you can Google it and I'm sure you'll find lots of information. It's essentially recycled oil. I think the word in Chinese and English is basically the same. I think the the word itself, the term itself comes from the fact that people apparently would um, take the oil from the gutters and then clean it and recycle it in some fashion to be reused. I, f I sort of ha like feel that that might be a little bit of an exaggeration. I think it's more what more commonly happens is just people... Um, collect the old really used oil and then take it to factories to get it recycled and then they'll resell it to people like street vendors and even restaurants. Um, I mean, as you can imagine, if you're operating a business and you had the, it, like, let's take ethics out away from it. If you could purchase oil that was like one half the cost of normal oil or a third or a 10th and you're like frying foods, I mean, that's like a big money saving, uh, a tool that you could use or you could increase your profit margin and it's it's really really common sometimes you can kind of taste food that just tastes like odd and you're kind of thinking i bet you this is gutter oil but it's really impossible to say for sure and that's just one of many different kind of food related like scandals that um go on in china and so it's kind of scary sometimes and there's no really no way to get away from it so that's definitely a major downside and especially when you're talking about street food which of course you know i think for foodies and i love food the whole concept of like, let's go and have the local street food, like sounds so cool. And yeah, it, it can be delicious, but it can be unhealthy. For me personally, um, I used to eat it a lot, but after a while, I just really started to get sick of it. And by, by sick, I don't mean like, um, like I got tired of it. I don't mean like literally I was like getting like ill. It just felt gross to me. So gross to the point where I was like, you know what? I'm just done. And nowadays I will get street food occasionally, but I just don't like to do it very often. There's one other negative about the foods and that is fake food. Uh, I know this sounds like odd to people who, at least it sounded odd to me when I came from the United States to China, that it's so prevalent. Uh, in fact, Madame Death Bay, I remember one of the earliest conversations we had was walking past like a local little like um, convenience store. And I was like, oh, I think I'm gonna go get a Coke. She's like, oh no, don't go there. Everything in there is fake. And I was like, what? I was like, like I'm gonna get a Coca-Cola. It's like not fake. She's like, oh yeah, it's fake for sure. 
And at that time I didn't believe it. Now, trust me, it's absolutely true. I cannot tell you how many times I've gone in to get a Coke, has the Coke packaging, um, looks legit, and you taste it, in one second you know it's not a real Coke. And again, I'm not talking about the fact that other countries have different flavors of Coke. No, this is just, it's not in any sense of the word a Coke of any kind. It's obviously fake. And um, that extends to all sorts of different types of foods. Now by fake, I don't mean it's like, I don't mean they're like making, um, like they're taking like plastic and converting it into Coke or something. Usually what it'll be is it'll be factories that are producing this kind of beverage or this kind of food item. Um, and then they're, they're packaging it in a different way to make it seem, for example, like it's Coke, even though it's not. Um, it's even a bigger problem with alcohol. There's a really big commonly known problem with fake alcohol. In fact, uh, you can go to places within the city. You can look at, you can see them just walking down the road, uh, where it's basically called, um, alcohol, I, I, the direct translation, forget about the direct translation of what the science says, but basically it's like old alcohol bottle recycling. You can take your old bottles of alcohol, primarily Baijiu, the, um, distilled liquor that's really popular in China. You can take that to them and they will give you cash for it. Um, why? Because then they will take that and sell it to people who will then use it to bottle, uh, different kinds of alcohol that are not that brand, they're cheaper to make, but then they can sell it for the same price and make profit. Uh, and then it, it that also extends to uh, Western imported liquors, so like whiskey, gin, vodka, things like that. Um, when you get it at the store, um, it might say like Johnny Walker, it might say um, Grey Goose, whatever, uh, depending on where you're going. It could be real, it might not. Most of the time, um, unless you're like a connoisseur, uh, and especially if you're mixing, the drinks, you know, it's, it's pretty hard, I think, for most average people to be able to tell, like, the quality of a, of a liquor when you're mixing it. A lot of times you won't know until the following morning. Uh, you might go out and have some drinks uh, at the bar and, uh, you know, think that you didn't really drink too much. And then the following morning have, like, a killer hangover. And most of the time people blame it on fake alcohol. I think the problem is mostly with the Baijiu, but then the other types of alcohol. I can say for sure that I've occasionally bought a bottle of this or that. Um, and then just had wicked, wicked hangovers and just been like, okay, I'm not going to drink that. And of course there are also knockoff liquors. That's uh, for me, that's not as bad because at least, you know, when it like, it'll look like a Johnny Walker or a Jack Daniels bottle. But then you like, if you look closer, you know, it's like Mac Daniels or something. I, that's not a specific example. I'm just kind of making that up, but you get the picture, right? It's like obviously fake. That's a little bit different because at least you know what you're getting into. So this is a really very high level and rushed, uh, take on the ups and downsides of Chinese food. There's definitely so much of variety and so much awesome stuff. My personal favorite um, Chinese food of all the different types of Chinese food is a uh, hot pot and specifically Chongqing style hot pot. So basically a hot pot is um, a pot of boiling oil or liquid that you can basically, it's like fondue basically for Westerners. You toss stuff in, you let it boil for a little bit, you take it out and eat it. And the Chongqing style is filled with super hot peppers and it's like really spicy. A lot of times you have a little uh, something to dip um, the food into after you take it out of the boiling water or oil or whatever it is. I hope this gives you a little perspective if you live outside of China about what life is like when you are here for an extended period of time. I'm curious about your experiences. Are you someone living in China? Uh, what has your experience been over the years um, with things that you like and don't like? What about the health aspect, the gutter oil, the getting sick of food, the lack of Western food, all the things I talked about? What are your experiences? Well, what have you uh, come to think about Chinese food over the years? And if you're just brand new to China, you know, I'd love to hear your opinion too. I think there's a huge difference between uh, someone coming to China to visit. Uh, there's a huge difference between that and then, but, and with somebody who has come to live for a few months or years. And then there's a huge difference between someone who's been here for a few months or years and someone who's been here for five, six or seven years or more. I think there's a huge differences between those different experiences, but I'm interested in, in your take. So that's it for this episode. I'll see you on the next episode. Gautzala.